rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that his, this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an account of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I am not strong enough to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So he summoned his master's debtors one by one. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? And he answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest, if make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in the very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then it, you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to, to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they ridiculed Jesus. So he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is prized by human beings is abomination in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Maybe John 16 was a little easier, but (laughs) we're going to stick with Luke. Years ago, um, a good friend of mine, John Patton, and I went to a Habitat for Humanity build. There was about, uh, it was a whole neighborhood was being built that day, you know, 20 some odd homes. And um, we were uh, told to go to house number four, and at house number four, the windows needed to be hung. So John and I got busy in doing that. We had nail gun and windows, and we just kept going. You know, we thought we were doing great. It was about nine in the morning till about two, two thirty in the afternoon, and we were done with the windows. Then the foreman showed up, and he came to John and I, and he said, "John, Justin, you have hung every window upside down." Whoa, yeah. And then he quoted Edward Everett Hale, the great American author. He said. You cannot do everything, but you must do something. And then he said, y'all did something. (laughs) (laughs) The master was not commending us that day, as we heard in this gospel passage. We were, um, we felt pretty small and pretty lame for hanging, like you would thought after a couple windows, that when they were sliding the wrong direction, we would figure it out, but we didn't. So 20 some odd windows in the house later, we, um, they were all hung upside down. This passage from Luke is a very difficult passage and, and maybe I was caught on Luke because today is the feast day of St. Luke. So today is the day we commemorate the physician. Um, Luke as um, physician and author of the Gospel of Luke as well as the Acts of the Apostles. Um, He is also the patron saint for artists um, and um, and musicians, I believe. Artists and, yeah, I think that's right. But so an interesting combination, physicians and artists, right, Um, that he's the patron saint of. But his gospel is um, really about bringing healing to us. And this passage that we heard from the gospel of Luke is one of the most difficult passages to um, figure out what's going on in it. And scholars are, uh, wrestle quite a bit in the commentaries about this. And so I had a, a fun time trying to figure out like, how to navigate it today. So I'm going to take it backwards, because I think that's how um, it was easier for me to understand. So 
God knows your heart. That's what it ended with. God knows your heart. God knows the intentions of your heart. And I think that's a great place to start. If we all knew and understood that fully in our lives, that God knows the intentions of our heart, then, then we, we might um, uh, act differently throughout our lives. We might actually take into account that, wow, if God knows what I'm about to do, maybe I should do what God wants me to do, not what, um, what I want to do. Um, and so uh, the Pharisees, you know, Jesus calls out the Pharisees about the intentions of their hearts and that they weren't always um, what uh, the gospel was or what God's will was. And same with us, right? God calls us out too, and, um, uh, but God loves us and we, we, can, um, we can amend our ways. Before that, Jesus says that those who are faithful with little will be faithful with much. And those who are dishonest with, li with little or with much will be dishonest with little and that kind of thing. And so I think the next thing that we, we learn moving backwards in this passage is that we are to be faithful, right? Um, and, and, and faithful in those little things that, um, that God places in front of us. Um, like hanging windows, right? <laughs> so, but to be faithful in those little things and then, um, and then when those big things come about, um, we can be faithful in that as well. And so it, um, it, to me, it's like serving out at Sidewalk Saturday and then um, experiencing Consecration Sunday. Faithful in a small thing, we might consider Sidewalk Saturday, uh, oh, an hour or two of work a week, a small thing, but it's huge for those who receive that work. Um, and then us committing ourselves to um, uh, consecrating, you know, asking God to consecrate us again to serve God in his church and be faithful in what we give to the church. That's a big thing here. There's a big dollar amount that we need to raise, but there's also a ton of stuff that we are doing that, um, that we believe is what God's will is for this church and for our community. And that's, that's a big daunting task. You can't do everything, but you can do something, right? And it's those somethings that I think add up to be our faithfulness. Prior to that, he says, worship only God. You can't serve God and wealth. You can't serve two masters. You can only worship God and serve only God. And so what a great reminder that is of, of if we're faithful to God, then we will truly be living out God's will. And then, um, and then the manager, who is shrewd, um, shrewd can also be translated wise. The manager of the, the, um, the owner, the landowner, and the, the one who was um, uh, basically a loan shark, right? Um, you know, making all these loans with different people of different things, olive oil, wheat, it could have been a bunch of other things, it could have even been money, and his debt collector um, was skimming off the top, and the owner found out about it and said, you're done, and so he was wise, and he goes out to the people that owed um, the, the owner um, different goods and made deals with them so that he could save face in the community. Um, and so it's an, that's an interesting story to think about, but I think it's um, Jesus tells this parable and the master commends the servant, the, the debt collector, for being wise, being creative, doing the work that he should have been doing from the beginning. And I think that's the, the message for us today. If, if we are to, if, if we know that God knows our heart, that we're only to worship God and serve God alone, that we are to be faithful with little and with much, then we are called to work wisely for the kingdom of God. And when we do that, we will be commended. We'll be commended by actually being able to see clearly the blessings that God has given us. And for Luke, that would be healing, salvation, love, peace, and the blessings that just get showered down upon us. So a very difficult passage that is, I think, pretty clear about how we are to live our lives. 
faithfully, worshiping God alone. So, I must tell you this, that John and I, at 2.30 in the afternoon, looked at each other and said, the only faithful thing for us to do is to go around and take every window out and, and turn them right side up. And we did. God does that for you and for me. When our lives are upside down and don't work quite right, Luke reminds us that we are healed perfectly and fully restored and turned right side up. All right, when did you get finished? <laughs> At like six in the evening. <laughs> the, the, uh, the foreman was long gone, but every window did get turned right side up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen.